All right, so it's a beautiful day here in Pacifica. The wind is starting to pick up, so I'm gonna get started. I'm thinking of making something of this scene here. Obviously the house in the foreground, the water, and the hills in the background. I'm painting on a 16 by 20 inch panel today. I've got my usual palette of colors, but I did squeeze out some permanent red medium from Rembrandt, because there is a bit of red in this painting. I'm using liquid as my medium, and probably gonna be using this brush here, which is a number 10 uh, synthetic flat and it's an ivory from uh, Rosemary Brushes. I want the horizon kind of high, and then I want there to be sort of a sweep kind of coming down like this, and so that the, you know, the rooftops of the houses, I mean, this is, this is just to give you the idea, sort of like rooftop of the houses here, and there's another house here, um, but that there's this kind of sweep. Actually, I think I might want that to sweep down even lower. Yeah, maybe sweep down even lower. Because I want to eliminate the bottom of the houses here. I don't know if you can see, but it's just, I don't want to have any of that lower portion. The waves appear to be coming in at an angle like this. And then there's some mountains like that. And then some distant mountains even, but even a lighter value, something like that. Actually, this kind of comes up higher. All right, so that's the basic idea. Uh, I do realize that out here, this is kind of a big area with nothing. However, occasionally I'll see like a wave pattern where there's kind of a white water trail behind it, something like that. So I'm thinking possibly I could create some, you know, interest in the middle ground here uh, with white water patterns. But to be honest, I'm really not sure. <laughs> this is, you know, an experiment. What I'm doing is just holding my brush up to the scene and then turning to match the angles on the panel just to kind of check and make sure that I've got the right angle. So I just started out with a rough sketch just to kind of, you know, a few lines to know where I wanted to place the different, um, you know, elements of the painting, and now I'm kind of getting more specific. Uh, but still keeping the sketch, you know, pretty simple, not a lot of detail. All right, so there is the composition. You know, I do have a few concerns. Uh, as I mentioned, like most of the interest is down here at the bottom. Uh, so, you know, I'm gonna have to draw the eye out here some way. I think I'm gonna put some white water around these cliffs in the distance and hopefully that will help. And then also maybe, you know, kind of punch up the color in the, you know, distant cliffs. But uh, that's the idea right there. All right, I got a dark mixture here of ultramarine blue, some burnt sienna, uh, lizard crimson, and liquid. And I'm just gonna start by indicating where some of my shadows are. I may just approach this almost as if this were like a no tan, just kind of Block in some shadow shapes. I just want to establish a light and dark pattern at this point, just to make sure that I've, you know, got a composition that I'm happy with. I'm gonna keep this whole portion dark here. I don't want to draw too much attention down here um, on this corner. It's kind of a shadow shape coming in like this. It's the chimney there, this window's kind of dark. All right, this whole side of the house is dark. And a scene like this is, you know, particularly challenging because there's just a lot of drawing involved. And there's also kind of a fence that comes out like this. I'm gonna put this in, but it could be kind of confusing. So maybe I'll, I may end up leaving it out, we'll see. All right, and then this house here is dark. The rooftops are light in this distant house is dark as well. Okay, there we go. So already getting a, a feeling of light here. All right, mixing up a color for the water using ultramarine blue, titanium white, and cadmium yellow medium. I've seen this mix quite a bit just because I want to keep it feeling fluid. So as I mentioned, I'm going to just um, try to suggest some waves here. 
There's some white water. I, I want a breaking wave right there. And this is kind of dark right now, but that's all right. I'm gonna come over it and lighten it up. And once I get this all scrubbed in, you know, I can start uh, erasing out areas if I don't like what I've got. You know, if I don't like the wave pattern, I can just sort of start erasing using a paper towel. Okay. For the distant hills, I'm going with a mixture of titanium white, burnt sienna, and a bit of cadmium yellow medium. I'm also mixing over a pile of green here, which is gonna kind of dull it down a bit. I'm just looking for simple shapes at this point. Uh, this is lighter back here and bluer. So adding a little bit of titanium white and blue to the mixture, or just kind of combining these two piles. And I'm gonna warm this up, but for now, I'm just gonna put it in like that. I'm adding titanium white and burnt sienna, and I'll just kind of scrub that on there. Just to create a little depth. All right, for the sky, just using titanium white and ultramarine blue. And this is much bluer than it's gonna end up being when I'm finished. Again, just starting with more or less a rough color and a value, just approximating. All right, so the wet sand is sort of a dark purple. I'm using a dioxazine purple and a bit of uh, yellow ochre. Okay, I want a little more color in that. Lightening it up and going with a little more dioxazine purple. So I'm looking at the, you know, the, the angle of the beach and trying to get my brush strokes to mimic that a bit. All right, for the sand, I'm using yellow ochre, titanium white, and dulling it down a bit with dioxazine purple. All right, that's a bit cruel, but I can warm that up later. All right, so for the house, I'm using a mixture of permanent red medium, uh, cadmium yellow medium, <laughs> and also titanium white. So for the rough in here, I'm just using a kind of a worn out natural bristle um, flat. But I plan to switch over to the other brush to my synthetic flat in a minute here. All right, for the shadow portions of the house, I'm just mixing dioxazine purple into the mix. One of the challenges painting you know, a saturated red like this is that, you know, it's in full light, so I want the value. I want it to be high value, but I still want saturation. And like when you add white to something, you know, you cool it down and you desaturate. So, you know, the trick is to boost the value while keeping, while keeping the color saturated. All right, using titanium white and ultramarine blue for the house behind it. Okay. And I do want to keep this painting as loose as possible and apply as thick, uh, you know, thick a paint as possible. And that gets more challenging. You know, painting waves is one thing, but when you're painting, you know, a sort of complicated scene, it's a bit more difficult. All right, for the chimney, I'm using titanium white and uh, yellow ochre. That's a little bit cool. I'm gonna have to punch that up a bit. You know, I always keep in mind that these colors, when I get them indoors, are gonna appear a lot more, or a lot less saturated. Uh, this chimney comes up and then it narrows. So I've got a change of plane here. So what I'll do is kind of sketch over, you know, keeping my roof line in mind to figure out where the slope comes down over here. For the shadow side of the chimney, I'm using um, yellow ochre and dioxazine purple. It's kind of a shadow in there. All right, so for the roof color, I'm using titanium white, some uh, thalo blue, and a bit of burnt sienna. And I may have to change this color so it doesn't just blend in with the water in the background, but we'll see. I'd like to, I mean, I like the scene the way it is. Uh, you know, the colors did attract me, so I want to attempt to keep them as true as possible. I could put white water in here to create a separation too, so I might do that. All right, that's basically the idea right there. For this distant white water, I'm just using titanium white and a bit of ultramarine blue. And I will probably be lightening this up a bit, but just wanted to experiment with getting some wave patterns in here. You know, when I'm painting waves, as you guys know, I try to keep the, 
the brush strokes pretty spontaneous. I feel like if I overthink the waves, they just, they usually don't work out. And in here, I'm gonna have some warmer tones. Maybe have some white water there as well. Tide is coming in, so. Even have a suggestion, maybe even a suggestion of it right there. So at this point, I'm walking back about 10 feet and I'm just looking to make sure that I like the composition before I go in uh, with thicker paint. And, you know, I want to be careful that I don't kill the energy of the scrub in. All right, so the red of this building is kind of a cool red. And look at the, look at the value. It's very light in value. All right, so I'm mixing some uh, titanium white with this uh, permanent red medium. I have a feeling I'm going to want to warm this up, but I'm going to start here. And this brush is definitely kind of clumsy for what I'm trying to paint here, but that's okay. That's what I'm, I want to make sure I don't get too careful. Mixing in dioxazine purple, and I do like to get um, color in my shadow shapes, if at all possible. And adding some red straight out of the tube. Titanium white and yellow ochre, and I'm trying to lay this on thick. Uh, and usually when I do, you know, this sort of subject matter, I get really tight and I end up not liking the painting because it just feels overly controlled. So today, I don't care if the painting doesn't work out. I want to paint with a large brush and just see if I can figure out how to make it work. All right, some titanium white and ultramarine for sky reflections. The sky reflections get sort of a darker blue as they go to off into the distance, but I'm just going to apply some here in the foreground. Again, keeping these brush strokes spontaneous as well, if at all possible. I'm out here exploring an idea, and if it doesn't work uh, when I get home and evaluate the painting, I'll always have ideas of how I can come back and, you know, attempt it again. So as I've said, Oftentimes I find a painting that doesn't work out to be more inspiring than one that does. All right, so I spent about an hour and a half on this painting. And although I don't feel like it worked out, uh, I did learn a few things in the process. You know, as I mentioned, I did have doubts about this compositional idea of having these houses down along the bottom and then nothing really out in the distance to draw the eye. There are a few things I see compositionally uh, that are a problem. For example, this white water that's running parallel to the roof line. I'd probably just make this water here all darker. And then these waves are actually a little bit too big. So I'd make them smaller and then possibly have some white water pattern out here that was you know, more pronounced to draw the eye out into the distance. I think it's really important to get to a point in your painting practice where you're not afraid to have a painting not work out. Um, I think if you're afraid of failure or if you're afraid of doing a bad painting, that's going to hold you back from experimenting. It's going to hold you back from growing. Since I've sort of let go and I don't care whether a painting turns out or not, uh, number one, I've done more successful paintings, but I feel like I've also learned, a, I learn a lot more and I'm growing faster by analyzing the work that doesn't work, trying to figure out why it doesn't work, to go out and try again. Uh, so do not be afraid to fail. It's an opportunity to grow. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you'd like to see some extra videos and help support the channel, there's a Patreon link down below. Uh, and there's a bunch of extra videos, like I said, and materials list. And the support is much appreciated. Other than that, stay creative, and I'll see you guys in the next video.